Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Let us pray. Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service so that as we take up the battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the prophet Joel. Now, now it is the Lord who speaks. Come back to me with all your heart. Fasting, weeping, mourning. Let your hearts be broken, not your garments torn. Turn to the Lord your God again, for he is all tenderness and compassion. Slow to anger rich in graciousness and ready to relent. Who knows if he will not turn again, will not relent, will not leave a blessing as he passes, oblation and libation for the Lord your God. Sound a trumpet in Zion, order a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly, call the people together Summon the community, assemble the elders, gather the children, even the infants, at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his bedroom, and the bride her a call. Between vestibule and altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, lament. Let them say, Spare your people, Lord. Do not make your heritage a thing of a shame, a byword for the nations. Why should it be said among the nations, Where is their God? Then the Lord, jealous on behalf of his land, took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, God, in your kindness. In your compassion, blot out my offense. O wash me more and more from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Have, have mercy, mercy on, on us, us, O Lord, Lord for, for we have sinned. sinned. My offenses truly I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned? What is evil in your sight I have done? Have, have mercy, mercy on us, O Lord, Lord for, for we, we have sinned. sinned. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, not deprive me of your Holy Spirit. 
Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervor, sustain me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. We are ambassadors for Christ. It is as though God were appealing through us, and the appeal that we make in Christ's name is, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made the sinless one into sin, so that in him we might become the goodness of God. As his fellow workers, we beg you once again not to neglect the grace of God that you have received. For he says, at the favorable time, I have listened to you. On the day of salvation, I came to your help. Well, now is the favorable time. This is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. heart create for me O God and give me again the joy of your help from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, Glory to you, o Lord. Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Be careful not to parade your good deeds before others to attract their notice. By doing this, you will lose all reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give alms, do not have it trumpeted before you. This is what the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win others' admiration. I tell you solemnly they have had their reward. But when you give alms, your left hand must not know what your right hand is doing. Your alms giving must be in secret and your father, who sees all that is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not imitate the hypocrites. They love to say their prayers standing up in the synagogues and at the street corners for people to see them. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you pray, go to the private room and when you have shut your door, pray to your father who is in that secret place and your father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. When you fast, 
Do not put on a gloomy look as the hypocrites do. They pull long faces to let others know they are fasting. I tell you solemnly, they have had their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that no one will know that you are fasting, except your Father who sees all that is done in secret. And your Father who sees all that is done in secret will reward you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. It's, it's Ash Wednesday. It's the first day of the journey on the season of Lent. I guess to many of us there is this sense and sheer sense of excitement that is stemming up and is stepping up during these days. I have to be honest to you personally, it has been a very exciting day for me this one Ash Wednesday. It all began at five this morning and the parish has turned into one experience of life today. We'll share a bit about this later in the announcement. Many things have unfolded today in the parish. Tremendous things has unfolded in the parish. And what is exciting about this day, it's, it's a journey, it's a journey. Today marks the first day, as I say, the curtains are drawn as we enter into this pilgrimage of Lent. And if you are one who enjoys traveling, and if you are one who enjoys going on a pilgrimage, on a long journey, and this is 40 days, it's your first day, you're all excited about it. Because this whole experience of this journey is what St. Paul tells us today. It's a favorable time. Favorable time. You know many times when you look at gospel texts and scripture texts, there's always this phrase, God's favor, God's grace. This is God's grace moment. It's a grace moment. It's a specific time in the whole journey of the church when you put aside everything and you tell yourselves, I'm going to get serious about my faith. I'm going to take it serious about my relationship with God and with, with people around me. It's a time when we sit back in serious reflection, in in-depth reflection of questions of what is happening in us. To be honest with you, Lent is always about a personal journey. It's about a personal journey of one in a community, sitting back in a retreat, in a recollection, in an introspective way of introspection of what's ha happening inside faith journey and ask yourselves what it is. What is happening in my life at this moment? Where am I with God? Where am I with people around me? In the Old Testament, when we begin to look at scriptures in the Old Testament, whenever someone speaks of this repentance, this renewal, this new beginning, there's always three things that depicts or shapes this. One is ashes. And that is what always is pictured on Ash Wednesday. Ashes from dust unto dust we return. It's a sign, it's a symbol, it's an outward expression of an inward change. This is ashes. Secondly, it's about sackcloth. You find this in the Old Testament. If you remember King David, when Prophet Nathan confronted him of his evil doing by his adultery with Bathsheba and having to kill the husband, Uriah, Nathan told him what he did was displeasing to God. And David repented by putting on a sackcloth and ashes. This is one of the things that you speak about the Franciscans today. That is why many times when you look at my habit, it's brown in color. And you wonder why it's brown in color. It's not because I don't wash it often. The color brown, it's because it's a sackcloth. That's how Francis picked up this. The Franciscans were never known as Franciscans in the beginning of the 12th century. They were known as an order of brothers of penance. Francis called them to return to the gospel of penance. And when Francis began the, the journey of this conversion, 
he put on a sackcloth. And as I said this morning to the people at Mass, I couldn't find any sackcloth. So this is this brown sackcloth that the Franciscans use to show that they are on this ongoing, ongoing conversion of life, of repentance. Ashes, sackcloth, and the third is fasting. That's how the Old Testament depicts renewal and repentance, fasting. Today in the Gospel, we have the three pillars of Lent. Prayer, almsgiving, and fasting. Prayer, almsgiving, and fasting. And during these 40 days of our pilgrimage of Lent, we will find ourselves in different moments of reaching out to others in almsgiving. We will find ourselves in solitude or in solitary moments of prayer life, in silence, in deep reflections, in our communion with God in prayer. And thirdly, thirdly we will abstain from many other things in life today, and that is this interior fasting of life craves, cravings, prayer, almsgiving, and fasting. But what is important, Jesus tells the disciples and he tells us today that whatever we do among these three pillars of Lent is that it needs to be done silently. Silently. That means you don't have to shout out what you're doing. What you have done in silence, in secret, your Father knows. And that is what we call today in spirituality intention. The intention that lies behind your act. Man looks at appearances, God looks at the heart. It is what lies at the depths of our heart in this moment. Let us take this moment, my dear sisters and brothers, as we begin this journey. As I say to you, there is a lot of excitement that's boiling and stemming out from the parish. And to help us to step into this journey, it's a 40 days journey. Today, it's the first day. And as I said to you, the parish has given us this beautiful road map, map road. You could have it with you. We just stepped into the whole experience of faith. And it's there. It's going to guide you. You know, if you don't have it, please download it from your Facebook or from your, from your website. It's there. It's going to guide us. Every day, you're going to have something to look at, something to chew on, something to mingle with, something to stir you and to deepen it. It's a bit different this year. We are at our homes. We are not at the parish. We are not going to mark our heads, but we are going to mark our hearts. I'm going to leave you with some questions. It's on a video. You know when you go on a, on a, on a pilgrimage, when you go on a travel, sometimes they have these promotional videos to get you all excited about this season. I'm going to leave you with a two, three minutes video. And it's going to tell you a bit about this season of land. It's my way of getting you excited as much as I'm excited about this and as much as the parish is excited about it. I ask you to stay with these beautiful questions. Stay with these reflections. Walk with it. Sleep with it. Dream about it. And hopefully you will reach your destination renewed, refreshed and alive. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. This year, unable to be marked by ashes, we mark our hearts and not our heads. May the loss of traditional Ash Wednesday observance be the first thing we let go in deepening our Lenten journey. Right now, in this moment, God asks you to return to Him as you are with your grief, sacrifice, and sorrow. God asks for your whole heart. Breathe deeply. How do you come before God this year? What is standing between you and the God who knows and loves you? How will you use this Lent to remove your limitation on God's love? How will you use this Lent 
to move closer to God who made, loves, and cares for you. Trace a cross on your forehead and repeat the ancient words, you are dust and to dust you shall return. God, you choose to limit yourself for the sake of your people. Let me walk with you this Lent as I face my own limitations and seek to be your presence in the world. Create in me a clean heart that I might know, love, and serve you better through my service of others. Amen. Kindly stand for the prayer of the faithful. As we begin the season of Lent, we come with grateful and repentant hearts to humbly offer our prayers to our Heavenly Father. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, bishops, priests and religious, that their Lenten observances strengthen them in these challenging times to lead and inspire the children of God to proclaim the gospel. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all nations in the world, especially our country, Malaysia, that leaders have the wisdom and integrity to lead and build their nations and serve the peoples, especially the poor, in ways that are pleasing to God. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all participating in this online Mass and for those who are absent, that they are faithful to our prayers, that we are faithful to our prayers, fasting and almsgiving, and turning away from what displeases God, walking more closely with Jesus. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for all COVID-19 frontliners, that they are adequately protected and supported in all aspects as they work tirelessly to save lives. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are suffering in these challenging times, the governments and the peoples from all walks of life reach out to give them generous and adequate support in their times of need. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for God's creation, that people of every nation have a grateful and responsible attitude towards creation and use natural resources more responsibly. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. We now pray for our own intentions in silence. We pray to the Lord. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. Ever loving and merciful Father, look with favor on our petitions. In your grace and mercy, may our Lenten observances help us to experience a fruitful and meaningful Lent. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, before we step into the blessing and the imposition of the ashes, I invite you to join me in prayer as we pray for the grace of Lent. All together, loving, loving God, God, during, during the this sacred season of Lent, of Lent, bring me closer to you. Prepare a place in my home and heart for silence and solitude, so that I may rediscover the, the grace, grace of a prayerful life. 
help me to pass from those things that threaten the well-being of body and soul, and remind me of the grace of simplicity, enlarge my heart so that I give to those in need, and in doing so, rediscover the grace of gratitude and generosity. May this season be a grace-filled time to rekindle my love and faith in you. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, let us humbly ask God our Father that He be pleased to bless with the abundance of His grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. O God, who are moved by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance, lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing. On your servants who are marked with these ashes, that as they follow the lantern observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this bread to offer, which it is given in human hands, have made it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine to offer. Through the wine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May, may the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that true works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins, we may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, he who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. As we step to the prayer face and to the Eucharistic prayer, we, we bring before the Lord the intentions offered at this evening's Eucharist. And for our own personal intentions as we begin the pilgrimage of Lent. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift, we lift them, them up, up to, to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It, it is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise we account. of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread in giving you thanks, Father, he broke it. He gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The 
mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O oh Lord. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Sebastian, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her husband, the Blessed Apostles with Saint Faustina, and St. John Paul II, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life, to praise, to glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the fate of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We'll take a moment to offer the grace of peace to one another. Peace be with you.
behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only, but only say, say the word, and, and my soul shall be healed. He who ponders the law of the Lord day and night will yield fruit in due season. Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received sustain us, Lord, that our Lenten fast may be pleasing to you and be for us a healing remedy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Just a couple of news and updates for the parish for the beginning of Ash. Wednesday, as I said to you, today has been a remarkable, exciting day for me personally in the parish. Quite a bit has unfolded this morning in the parish. We had, as you know, we had Mass, the Eucharistic celebration from as early as 6.30 till 
in all in we had about 250 people who participated in the Eucharist and was blessed with ashes topping that up we distributed close to 500 packets of Ash Wednesday kits 500 packets and if you still have in need of it please do drop by the parish at the Garden of Mercy we still have a handful of it for those who are still in need of these ashes during this pilgrimage of land I just want to take a moment to thank all those who who made themselves available during this day especially the volunteers who came in as early as 5 in the morning to see to the arrangements and to be of service to the parish and I also like to single out uh, my two friars John Anandan and David Regan who made themselves available to assist in the Eucharistic celebrations with that in mind we begin this journey of Lent as we mark ourselves with our heart this Ash Wednesday these beautiful prayer cards these Lenten prayer cards have been made available to all of us and it's finished at this moment in the parish we have sent it all out we don't have any extra copies in the parish you could download them from the website of the parish or from the Facebook to have a copy it gives you an idea of the roadmap that we are walking and journeying on this season of uh, Lent we are stepping into this whole experience of faith this week and then we'll step into hope come this Sunday so I really would like to encourage you to take this moment to step into this experience of Lent lastly my dear friends it's been a tradition that every time when we draw open the curtains of Lent we usually have this experience of this Lenten campaign and to have us to step into this beautiful experience of Lent we have the form five students of the parish of the catechetical group the love squad I'm just going to allow you to view this beautiful video clip and it gives us an idea of how this young beautiful young people have stepped up to be a part of this express experience and expression for Lent so let's take a moment to view this beautiful video To me, Lent is a season of sacrifice, where we put our own needs below others. Lent is also a time when we listen to what God is telling to us in our hearts, what God is telling us to do in order to carry out His Word. To me, Lent is a season of fasting, prayer, and charity. It is a way for us to make Jesus' death and resurrection more meaningful. And it is a way to help us strengthen not only our bond with God, but our bond with others too. Lent has been a tradition time for fasting or giving something up. Fasting does not necessarily mean cutting down on food. As for me, decreasing my time on social media is what I usually do for Lent. Lent is a chance for us as children of God to come together and to do things that we normally don't do or in other words to get out of our comfort zone it calls us to put our words into actions and to really help those who are less fortunate than us remember in last Lent season that is in 2019 my teacher told us to pray whenever an ambulance passed by to pray for their health to pray that they will be all safe and sound to now I still believe that this act is a really meaningful one. So during Lent, many people decide to give up something that they love. Perhaps chocolate, sweets, or social media. To me, Lent is a season of almsgiving. It is a season that we give up something that we want, or we give something to people who need them the most. And most importantly, we could spend more time with God instead of using it for our own pleasure. For me, I think Lent is a time where we do something special to get closer to God. Lent is a time that I can reflect everything I've done to ask for forgiveness and finally strengthen my faith so that it prepares me for the coming Easter. 
Then my family and I will do charity works and donation to the old folks home and homeless. Besides, we also try our best to not waste food, be humble and reflect on our past sins. Me, Lent is a time when we sacrifice our indulgences, just like what Jesus did when he fasted in the desert for 40 days. It is also a time of reflection, where we reflect our actions and what Jesus has done for us. Lent to me is a faulty day, liturgical season, which consists of three fold missions, which is prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, in preparation for this love. Lent is all about fasting. Lent begins on Ash Wednesday, where we trace our foreheads with sign of the cross, with ashes to remind us that we are dust, and to dust we shall return. Lent to me is about remembering why Jesus died on the cross, that is to save us from our sins. So what are we doing with this sacrifice? What are we doing during these 40 days? So Lent to me is about acts of service. The smallest little things we do, with the right intentions to help others, can go a long way. Especially during Lent, we are also encouraged to be more mindful of our thoughts, actions and intentions. To me, Lent is a time of forgiveness, sacrificing, fasting, and challenge ourselves to do something for 40 days. It starts from Ash Wednesday until Holy Thursday. It is also a preparation of Easter. Fasting and doesn't mean it came with only food. As what I does usually was to fast on social media. Ignite Hope. That's the team for this year's 2021 Lenten campaign for the Diocese of Penang. And the Love Squad has given us a glimpse on how the parish will be embarking on this beautiful journey. And as I said to you in the very beginning, I'm all excited and I, and I believe strongly the parish and the parishioners are as much excited as we are together. So as we begin this day, as we mark ourselves with this journey of renewal, of repentance, and to recreate this new life, let us begin this journey together as one family, one community, in one heart, and in one mind. Kindly stand for the final blessing. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. Bow your heads for God's blessing. Pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before your majesty. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promise to those who do penance. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by your lives. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.